Hello, thank you for joining me. This is a tutorial on one of our most useful and frequently used functions in ImagePro, finding, measuring and counting objects of interest. This is commonly known as segmentation and this is done in the count size tab. So let's select that. In order to segment objects, we have to help ImagePro identify the intensity range of our objects. And we may wish to add additional information such as object size range, or how to separate joined objects. In this image, I'm looking to identify the bright objects. Some of you will recognize them as Herc stained nuclei. And if you don't recognize them, it doesn't matter. The important point is that we want to separate the bright objects from the background. This image is a 12-bit grayscale image, which means that the pixels are in the intensity range of 0 to 4095. The first thing that I'm going to do is reset my measurement options by clicking on the green reset buttons. So I have two of them, one here and a second here. This is a good practice whenever we start a protocol. Next, I'm going to choose the types of measurements that I'm going to make of each object. So we do this by clicking on the Types button. And here we see on the left-hand side a list of all the possible measurements we can make. And on the right-hand side, we have the selected measurements. So I'm going to start by clearing all of these selected measurements. And I'm now going to be measuring regions. So I'm going to find, separate regions from the background. And I'm interested in measuring for each object its area, its mean intensity. So I want intensity mean. And I'm also going to measure the roundness of each object. So let's add those and close the measurements types. Now I'm going to make a first pass at finding my objects of interest by selecting the auto bright function. So here on the left we see bright. We click on that. When I do this, ImagePro uses an algorithm to find the intensity that separates bright objects from the background. And you'll notice it's done a good job. However, it's usual to make some adjustments at this stage. If we look at the threshold tool on the right hand side of the application, you'll notice that we can adjust the threshold that separates the background from the objects. And if I go back to Auto Bright, we'll see that Image Pro set a threshold of 841, which means that anything darker than 841, any pixels darker than 841, are currently part of the background. Anything 841 or brighter are currently considered to be objects. And I can make a manual adjustment to this threshold. So here I'm going to decrease it, and we see that more of my objects become selected. And I'm happy at that point. You may also notice that Image Pro changes the selection tool from Auto Bright to Manual when I make manual adjustments. I could also, if I wish, manually enter the lower threshold in this text field. I can also change the name of my object class. So let's change this from the default name of Class 1 to Nuclei. And I can change the color with which my objects are displayed. So let's display them in red. And at this point, I can press Count. So here now ImagePro actually executes a count. And if I show my measurements table, so we select data table, you can see that we have a measurement table that shows all of the types of measurements I wish to make. So we can see we have the area, the mean intensity, and the roundness. And we have bidirectional feedback here. So if I select an object in the table, it gets highlighted in the image. And conversely, if I select an object in the image, each, its measurement row in the table is selected. Next, I'm going to select my measurements options, which we find here in the ribbon. And when I select them, they're displayed by default on the right of the application. Here I can decide whether I want to include text in my measurements. So by default, we're displaying the name of each measurement. I'm going to change this to none. I can also perhaps change the width of the line with which my objects are displayed. And it's very common to exclude any objects that touch the edges of the image. This is because we can never know their true area or true mean intensity. Now the option to, the option to exclude objects that touch the edge of the image is called clean borders. And here I can set my clean borders to all. That means any object that touches the edge of any part of the image will not be counted. So if I clear my measurements and now recount, we now exclude any objects that touch the edge of the image. At this point, my protocol looks good. All of my nuclei are being found, but if I look closely, 
I can see that some very small objects, which are clearly not nuclei, or not objects of interest, are being selected, such as these. I can solve this problem by setting the range of measured objects. So let's select Edit Range. Now I can select the range of any of my measured criteria. In most cases it makes sense to set range based on area. So here I can see the maximum, uh, the maximum valid area and here's the minimum valid area. So I can either adjust this minimum slider here or I can set a minimum in this text field. So if I enter a minimum of let's say 50 pixels and say OK, we now see that those small objects, if I clear my objects and recount, those small objects are no longer selected. So things are looking great. So the next problem I want to solve is that some of my objects are currently joined. So if I look at this pair of nuclei here, they're currently being measured as a single object. So I can now use the split tool to try and resolve that problem. So here I have the option to either use boundary shape. If I use boundary shape, it's going to look for indentations between a pair of objects. Or I can use the watershed method. And I could just hit split. And there we go, we can see that Image Pro has now split these objects into a pair. Alternatively, let's clear my objects. I could choose the option to split objects with count. And now when I do my count, I'll count and split at the same time. And now we look pretty good here. We've got most of our objects separated. I still see a pair of objects that are joined here. It's just, I think this is the only pair that is still joined. So I'm going to manually split them. I'm going to take this split tool and with a left click I can start a line between these objects. I'll double click to finish my line and I've manually split them now into a pair of objects. So now I've got a table in which I can see all of my objects correctly measured. And if we look at the statistics tool or the statistics summary we can see that we have a mean area of 159 pixels. I can see my mean intensity and my mean roundness. And if we look in the table here I can also see that I found a total of 76 nuclei. If I wish, I can export my table straight to Excel. Now, I don't usually want to go through the whole process of, of building a, a protocol from scratch. So as soon as I've come up with a great protocol now, I can hit the Save option, choose a name to save my protocol. So let's call this one Example Nuclei and Save. So now whenever I want to repeat my, my measurements, I can simply load my protocol from my list of save protocols. There's my example nuclei and execute my count. Now I'm going to move on and measure the objects in my second image. In this case, the image is an 8-bit monochrome image, so it has pixels in the range of 0 to 255 gray levels. My objects are dark on a bright background in this case. Again, I'm going to start by resetting my measurements options with the green reset buttons. I'm now going to choose my measurement types. And I'm interested in measuring the area of each object and its roundness. And I'm going to start my protocol in this case by selecting the Auto Dark Segmentation option. Now ImagePro is now using an algorithm to set a threshold that separates the dark objects from the bright, bright background. Again, it's done a good job, but again, I'm likely to want to refine this. Here we can see that ImagePro has set an upper threshold of 101 grey levels. So anything that's 101 or darker is considered to be an object. Anything brighter than this is considered to be background. Let's make an adjustment. And at this point, I think I'm happy that I found all of my objects. I think again, I'm going to use a range. So let's edit range. And let's look at the minimum area that we're going to accept. So we can move this minimum setting until we exclude all of the objects that we don't feel are valid. So I think that looks pretty good. If I say OK, 
and choose the option to count. Again, some of my segmented objects are joined together. So if we look, for example, at this object, we can see we have three objects joined. So let's choose the option to split with count. And if we recount our objects, we now have objects that are quite nicely separated. We had some that remain joined here. So let's use the option to manually split those. So I'm going to draw lines that divide these objects. And double click to finish the line. And then we execute the split. And now we have all of our objects correctly separated. Okay, I'm just going to change my measurement options slightly. So let's remove the name of the object from the image and perhaps slightly increase the width of the, the line and there I have all of my measured objects if I look in the measurements table at my summary we can see that we have a total of 49 objects in the image and we also have a value for their mean area and mean roundness Thanks very much for watching the tutorial. If you have any questions, please contact Media Cybernetics.